day and welcome to Alena Media TV. We are broadcasting from Toronto, Canada. I am Elsa Abraham and in this episode we are bringing you editorial. Ethiopia's Tigre conflict in the battle to control information. Let's go for a quick break. When we come back we'll get our editorial in details. Welcome back from that short break. Now, the corruption of fighting in Ethiopia's Tigray region 100 days ago has pitied a journalist wanting to report on the conflict against a government seeking to maintain total narrative control. The government imposed lockdown of the northern region and communications blackout affecting the internet, mobile phones and landlines has made access and assessment to aid agencies dealing with and unfolding humanitarian crisis extremely difficult. It has also made it next to impossible for media seeking entry to investigate artillery attacks on populated areas, deliberate targeting and massacres of civilians, extrajudicial killings, widespread looting and rape, including by suspected Eritrean soldiers. At the same time, journalists in the country have been detained face a lot of threats and harassment and even attacks. This is the worst period in my 10 plus years of journalism, said one Addis Ababa based Ethiopian freelance journalist who like every journalist contacted for this article insisted on anonymity due to fear of repressals, both professional and physical. The government noted that even before Prime Minister Abi Ahmed ordered the November 4th offensive to remove the Tigray People's Liberation Front after attacks of federal army bases, the government was already using new anti-hate speech and fake news legislation against critical government. The risk was mainly restricted to imprisonment and verbal harassment. Now, you have the extra risk of losing your life or having your house ransacked as well as vicious social media trolling. The journalists said they have had to abandon several writing projects, including one on the flight of a small ethnic group caught up in the secretive Tigray conflict due to fears about plain old Tigray and intimidation of journalists. The list of attacks on and intimidation of journalists in Ethiopia is growing. After the Adi Standard, one of Ethiopia's most influential independent publications, issued a statement in early November urging the government to open channels of communication. Medihane Ekeba Michael, a senior editor, was arrested at his home for attempts to dismantle the constitution through violence and outrage against the constitution. He was soon released, but then arrested again and held for about a month. Responsible for much of the paper's day-to-day -day operations, his absence meant it had reduced its journalistic output. On January 19th, Dawit Kebede Ayara, a reporter with broadcaster Tigray TV, was found dead with gunshot wounds to his head in his car near Mekeli, Tigray's regional capital, the Committee to Protect Journalists has urged an independent investigation into whether his killing was motivated by his work. On February 8th, Ethiopian freelance journalist Lucy Kassa, who has reported about Tigray for several foreign media, including the Los Angeles Times and Al Jazeera, said Ahmed intruders broke into her Addis Ababa home. She said men knocked her to the ground, raided her apartment, and took a laptop and other items related to her reporting accusing her of spreading lies and supporting the Tigray junta. Three leading Democratic U.S. Senates recently wrote to Adi Abi expressing concerns about the erosion of press freedoms and government's draconian tactics while calling for the release of detained journalists. Now, rights groups said the continuing clash about freedom of the press is rolling back gains made by the country's long-suffering media signaling a swing back towards authoritarian intolerance. The imprisonment of journalists, many of whom were held for weeks without formal charges, are an indicator of the 
deterioration of press freedom in Ethiopia and a sign that the government is regressing despite the positive reforms made in 2018 when Abi became prime minister, said Mutoki Momo, CPJ's representative to sub-Saharan Africa. Ethiopian journalists should feel free to publish critical reports and commentary and that this cannot happen in an environment where police can arrest and hold them for weeks without charge, bluntly weaponizing the judicial systems to indicate the media. The press secretary for the office of the Prime Minister of Ethiopia did not respond to several requests for comments. Media Landscape Challenges When Abiy was awarded the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize, the committee praised his discontinuing media consortium. Among his achievements during his first 100 days in power, positive changes to Ethiopia's media landscape, including the country ending its block of more than 260 websites and lifting a ban on media outlets forced to work in exile, saw Ethiopia rise in the World Press Freedom Index compiled by Reporters Without Borders from 150 out of 180 countries in 2018 and the 99th rank in 2020. The CPJ's 2018 annual prison census report on journalists imprisoned for their work around the world included no Ethiopians, a first in 14 years. But as Abiy's tenor has progressed, so has criticism of his lack of transparency. The Prime Minister announced the Tigray Offensive in effect a declaration of war on Facebook and for repeating what has always happened in Ethiopia when a fresh administration arrives, promising reform and freedom of speech. Initially, new media flourish as restrictions are lifted, but within a few years, the situation returns to the old ways of previous Ethiopian government. The CPJ's 2020 prison census published in December 2020 included seven Ethiopian journalists, the third most among sub-Saharan African countries after Eritrea and Cameroon. Six Ethiopian journalists have been released since the report was published. Monitors do acknowledge that the government has to deal with a media landscape that is institutionally weak in which freedom of expression is abused by some media to foment tension and partisanship, even ethnic violence. There are legitimate concerns from state and non-state actors about misinformation, disinformation, and incitement, particularly during times of political tension. Mr. Motoki said, however, these concerns should not be used as pretexts to harass the media for critical reporting to criminalize dissenting views or as justification to throw journalists behind bars. It has long been understood that Ethiopia journalists have to tougher than Ethiopia-based foreign journalists who can more easily seek backup from international agencies and embassies. Ethiopian journalists from Tigray face even more difficulties from the conflict's fallout. Ethnic Tigrayan journalists have reportedly been collectively suspended from state media outlets, while several anchors of state-owned Ethiopian television were suspended from work for objecting to the wording of news about the Tigray war, according to a source in the industry. Commenting on RSF statements about the attack on Kasa, who is Tigrayan, the government's Ethiopia state of emergency fact check said all individuals need to be free from any form of harm, but added the press watchdog was wrong in describing her as working for foreign organizations because she did not have the necessary press authorization. CPJ condemned the government's unit statement as disrespectful instead of identifying these attackers and holding them to account. Authorities have instead sought to discredit Lucy Casa for saying she is not a legally registered journalist, exposing growing hostility to the press, it said. Extreme intolerance, but the screw seems to be turning also on foreign journalists too. 
even while being denied access in Tigray. Journalists have said that members of foreign media are also portrayed by the Ethiopian state as traitors and enemies of Ethiopia, paid by Western government to destabilize Ethiopia. Foreign reporters also report difficulties renewing work visas, while some have been threatened with deportation, just quoting the TPLF. The region's former governing party that has clashed with Abi will get in trouble, journalists have said. The level of intolerance around Tigray is as extreme as anything I have seen, said one long-term commenter on Ethiopia who recently visited a country after working there for nearly a decade and who described Abi as displaying classic dictatorial tendencies. There have also been suggestions by journalists that the government is employing a coordinated strategy to oppress and undermine journalists through social media, state media, and the Ethiopian diaspora. Al Jazeera could not independently verify these claims. But just as the government is being accused of firing out realms of propaganda and leveraging claims of fake news, so too have its opponents. The anti-government strategy appears to be focused on increasing activity on social media, in particular on Twitter, with supporters encouraged to create new accounts and respond to content about the conflict while also spreading hashtags and tweeting and influential Twitter users. The government has countered by positioning itself in the role of fact checker and provider of the reliable information surging usurping the government the job that the media should be doing the result is extremely confusing information environment compounded by a general sense of suspicion about the information coming out about the conflict all of which journalists must contend with and try to make sense of while being impeded by the government the government also needs to understand that the media is an important opponent to building a strong democratic society that can inform the public and serve as a platform for dialogue, said the Tewedros Tife, chair of the Amara Association of America, a U.S.-based advocacy group for the Amara people, Ethiopia's second largest ethnic group. The government needs to view the Ethiopian media as a partner and not limit journalist access to conflict areas and government officials. This is where we end today's episode on editorial. Make sure you like, share, comment, and let us know your thoughts on this particular episode. Thanks for watching.